This one might cause a bit of a stir because some people will disagree with the practice of filming somebody breaking the law and reporting them to the police. However, that said, here's one such instance. But I'm going to tell you some of the problems with this, at least from a lawyer's perspective. One of the problems with this video uh, that I'll explain that some people will encounter if it goes to court and one of the reasons the police may not even prosecute this, but let's watch the video first and I'll tell you my views. The link to this is in the description below. If I click the right button, then it'll play properly. All right, so clearly a lorry. And if I pause it at the right moment, you can see the driver here appears to be looking down. You can see his eyes looking down at his mobile phone. One hand on the wheel and he's obviously in traffic. Let's keep watching. Now, driving a huge vehicle like this obviously carries responsibility. Um, now, let's look at it from a legal perspective and analysis. So, um, obviously, if the police were interested in who was driving the vehicle, they would send out a one section 172 notice to the company to say who was driving the vehicle at this time. They will obviously have to reply to say who it was. The next issue is at the end, how to identify the vehicle. That's nice and clear. You do sometimes hear cyclists reading these out so that it's sort of a doubling down on the evidence, if you like, so that it's read out contemporaneously on the recording. But here, there's no need for that. It's absolutely crystal clear. But um, moving to the evidence itself, this is the portion that everybody would look at. Now, this is really the only portion, this bit here, and then it goes. So this is the portion that we'd have to look at. Is the driver using his mobile phone per the definition in the regulations 110, which is anything from checking the time, illuminating the screen, sending, drafting a message, listening to a message, browsing the internet, changing a song, whatever. If it's in the hand and he's doing any of those things, then it's in contravention of regulation 110 it attracts six points and a fine but in the comments please do you think that this driver is using his phone per the regulations or not because there's an argument either way now many people say well don't be silly of course he's using his phone look it's in his hand and he's obviously using his phone but if i were to hold my phone like this and I'm not using it because I'm not looking at it. I haven't illuminated the screen. I'm not drafting anything. I'm not doing anything with it. I'm just holding it in my phone. That is not an offense. If I so much as touch the screen to illuminate the screen, even though I haven't looked at it, that is in contravention of the legislation. Now, that's how tight it is. But if we look at this video here, this portion that is relevant to this offense, alleged offense, prospective offense, you cannot be sure that this driver is using the phone in that way because you can't see the screen. You can't see that it's illuminated. You can't see what he's doing. It might not be a phone. And even if it is a phone, it probably is. But even, even if it is a phone, he may not be using it in contravention of the legislation. These are the arguments that will be put forward in court. Now, it isn't just, well, it looks like it and more likely he's using it and therefore we should punish him for it. It needs to be beyond any reasonable doubt or so that a bench or a jury is sure. I mean, this doesn't go to the Crown Court, so let's not get carried away. Um, this will be heard in the magistrate's court. The magistrate would have to be convinced that there is no doubt that he was using the phone at this point in time. And there's an argument there. And that is the problem with this kind of evidence. And I've spoken to many police who say that they don't take these cases forward very often because there is an argument that he's doing something else or it's not a phone or, or whatever. And so many of those cases don't go forward. That is why you see cyclists going around the other side, looking through the driver's window, looking down at the phone and getting a very clear, crystal clear view of not even just that the, the screen's illuminated many times, but what is on the screen and what they're doing with it. And if it is lit up and it is a phone and it is in the hand, boom, that's enough to be breaching these regulations. Now, many people don't like cyclists that are doing this or anybody that's doing this, frankly, filming someone, reporting it to the police. But as I've said many times before, these incidents involving vehicles that are distracted from the road, 
And you often see them leaving a gap in front now, dubbed the WhatsApp gap, uh, because people are using WhatsApp and other things and leaving a gap in front because they know either consciously or subconsciously that they should leave a gap or they're leaving a gap because they haven't seen that the traffic's moved away. And so in any of those cases, they can, as my previous video the other day revealed, they can crash into somebody because they haven't realized that there's somebody there. And in situations like this, where you've got this size of a lorry, which is driving down the road, and he's, in my view, for what it's worth, quite clearly looking down, reading his phone or scrolling his phone or whatever it is that he's doing, hand on the wheel, creeping along and just hoping to keep up safely with traffic. And he's obviously just bored driving through the traffic. And so that is my view for what it's worth. But my view based on this would not be enough to secure a conviction because there is some doubt there as to whether he was actually doing that or not. Now, many people will again say, well, there's there's no doubt he's clearly on the phone. But to that, you would obviously expect arguments to be put forward if you were this driver and you would expect a lawyer to fight for you. And you would expect if I was defending this case, for example, I would say you cannot see the screen. You cannot see anything on the screen. You cannot be certain that it's a phone. Therefore, you cannot be certain that he was lighting the screen up or doing anything with the phone if it was a phone. Therefore, you cannot be certain that it was in contravention of this legislation. And therefore, he must be acquitted of the offence. And so those are my views in a case like this. But there are many that are plainly clear and it, it's got no room for error and no room for doubt. But either way, let me know what you think in the comments to things like this. It's a pet hate of mine, so I keep talking about it. But this one, um, it should be clear, but there's legal arguments against it. Let me know what you think, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.